In this video, we're going to talk about solution stoichiometry. Solution stoichiometry is no different than regular stoichiometry in that you're still going through moles. The only difference is, is how you get to moles. And how you get to moles is through the concentration. And that concentration unit that we're going to talk about mostly is molarity. Molarity, remember, is the moles of solute over the liters of solution. That equals our big M. So that if I multiply my molarity times my volume, I get moles. And we can do anything with the moles once we get there. Just like we did with regular stoichiometry, I can take it to grams, I can take it to limiting reagent type problems, I can take it to uh, another molarity if I want. So wherever you can go for moles, you can go using solution stoichiometry. So let's do a problem where we calculate molarity. And problem 4.65 part A asks us to calculate the molarity of the following. And we have 29.0 grams of ethanol in 545 milliliters of solution. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've got to take my grams and turn it into moles. So 29.0 grams of ethanol times one mole of ethanol is 46.07 grams of ethanol. Okay, how did I know that? Well, ethanol, C2H6O, if I add all those guys up, that's going to give me my 46.07. Now I've got that in moles. Grams cancel, so I have moles. I'm going to now divide by my 545 milliliters in terms of liters. So times 1 over, and I can put 1 over anything uh, and leave it unitless if I want to divide by something, or if I want to multiply by something, I can put it over 1. So 1 over 0 0.545 liters. And when I multiply this out, I'm going to get 1.16 molar ethanol solution. All right, how about we go backwards now? What if we take 35 milliliters of a 5.50 molar solution? How many grams of our solute, KOH, is in that volume? So anytime you see the big M, remember that is moles of solute per liter of solution. So what I tell everybody to do is don't use the big M. Uh, just go ahead and write in these problems moles per liter. That will remind you that you have to multiply by liters in order to get moles. So I'm going to take my 5.50 molar, that's 5.50 moles of KOH for every 1 liter of KOH solution times, now I'm going to multiply by my volume in liters. So that is 0 0.0350 liters. So my liters cancel. I'm given moles. And I just need to turn moles into grams. So one mole of KOH is 56.11 grams of KOH. And see if we can get that in there, KOH. And now look, my moles cancel, and I'm left with grams of KOH. So this becomes 10.8 grams of KOH. So if I take 35 milliliters of this solution, 10.8 grams of KOH could be expected to be found in that volume. Another kind, common kind of stoichiometry problem in dealing with solutions is the dilution equation, or the addition of solvent to make something less concentrated. So when we add a solvent to a solution, the number of moles of our particles stays the same. So if you count those spheres, they're exactly the same. But the space in which they're free to move has changed. They've become uh, less concentrated, so more dilute. And there's an easy way that we can calculate dilution, 
of molarities. And that is through the dilution equation, what we call M1V1 is equal to M2V2, or your book uses M initial, V initial, M final, V final. Exactly the same thing, okay? So we can calculate the new molarity of a solution if we dilute it, or we can calculate what solution we might have used, and it's basically just all algebraic manipulation. So let's try a problem like this. So in problem 4.74, water is added to 25 milliliters of a 0.866 molar potassium nitrate solution until the volume of the solution is at exactly 500 milliliters. What is the concentration of the final solution? So the first thing to do in these problems where we actually have equations that we're using is to pull out these quantities and give them a name. So it says water is added to 25 milliliters. So 25 milliliters, not 2.5, 25 milliliters, 25.0 milliliters of a 0 0.866 molar solution. Now, that means that this should be my volume that I started with, volume 1. And this concentration must be, not volume 1, let's try that again, molarity 1. And then they tell us that the final volume of the solution is 500 milliliters. So 500.0 milliliters must equal V2 or VF. That means I don't know M2. That is my unknown quantity. So now that I've got all of these things named, I can just go ahead and take a look at my equation. M1V1 is equal to M2 V2. I'm solving for M2, so I'm going to divide both sides by V2. So that cancels, and I get M2 is equal to M1 V1 over V2. Now, it's better to rearrange these equations when you're using the letters than just going ahead and plugging numbers in. It actually does speed up the calculations to have those numbers already in the final places. Um, and it also helps you error check units so that you can see the volume units, volume 1, volume 2, as long as they're in the same unit, I don't have to change them. So here we have M2 is going to equal the molarity 1, which is 0 0.866 molar, times volume 1, which was 25.0 milliliters, divided by 500 0.0 milliliters. So the milliliters cancels. I'm left with molarity. And this gives me 0 0.0433 molar potassium nitrate. Now this problem is also sort of a dilution equation, but in instead of adding water to dilute the solution, we're actually adding a secondary solution. So what we need to do is we need to find the moles moles of our solute in both solutions. And then we need to find the total volume so that the total number of moles divided by the total volume gives us our new molarity. So let's pick out the individual pieces here. We've got 35.2 milliliters. So 35.2 milliliters of 1.66 molar KMNO4 and we have 16.7 I don't know what's wrong with me today but 16.7 milliliters of a 0 0.892 molar KMNO4 solution and it says calculate the concentration of the final solution and we assume volumes are additive that is a big deal because volumes actually are not additive. Uh, when we're dealing with aqueous solutions, for the most part, we assume that they are additive, but in fact, they are not. If you want to test that out, just go ahead and combine a cup of water and a cup of rubbing alcohol and put it into a big measuring cup and see what total volume you end up with. One cup plus one cup does not equal two cups. So, like I said, for aqueous solutions, we're going to assume volumes are additive. So, 
here is the process. We're going to find the number of moles of solution A. And we're going to find the number of moles of solution B. So I'm going to add moles of A plus moles of solution B and then divide by the total volume. That's going to give me my new final molarity. So to find the moles of solution A, I'm going to take the molarity, 1.66 moles per liter, times the volume in terms of liters, 0 0.0352 liters, and then I'm going to do the same thing for the second one and find the volume, the number of moles of that solution, 0.892 moles per liter, times the 0 0.0167 liters. So when you do the math, you get 0 0.058432 and 0 0.014896 moles respectively. Add those guys up and we're going to get the total number of moles. Total moles is going to equal the sum of those two. So 0 0.058432 plus 0 0.014896 and that gives me 0 0.073328. Remember, let's carry through as many sig figs as we can at this point and then we'll round at the end. So that's my total number of moles. Now what's my total volume? So the total volume is equal to the 35.2 milliliters plus the 16.7 milliliters. 16.7, that doesn't look like 16.7. 16.7 milliliters to give me a total volume of 51.9 milliliters. So I'm going to take this volume in terms of liters, again, because remember molarity is liters, and divide it into my total number of moles there, so 0 0.073328 moles divided by 0 0.0519 liters, and we get 1.4 one molar potassium permanganate solution. So you can see the molarity we get is going to be lower than the highest molarity that we had, 1.66 molar there. Um, and that's a good rule of thumb. If you end up getting a molarity that's higher than either of your starting molarities, something went wrong in your dilution. So that is a guiding principle. The next style of solution stoichiometry problem you might run into is titrations. Now this is a volumetric analysis that is going to measure volumes of solutions very very carefully using a burette and volumetric glassware. Um, the most common one we see in Gen Chem is acid base style reactions but there are many many other types of titrations you can do. Uh, redox titrations, water analysis titrations, and the list goes on and on. Um, but the key thing here is it is a very precise and accurate analytical technique uh, and the key is knowing how your analyte and your titrant are going to react. In other words, you have to know the stoichiometry of the reaction that you're dealing with. Um, so let's talk about acid-base titrations and you can apply this to any other titration. Um, so first off, let's talk about when you have a one-to-one -one mole ratio of stoichiometry. This is actually pretty simple. When you know that you have a one-to-one -one mole ratio of an acid to a base, you can modify the, the dilution equation to moles of acid times the volume of the acid must equal moles of base times the volume of the base. Because at the equivalence point, the point at which the number of moles of acid equals the number of moles of base, that must be true. Molarity times volume equals moles. Molarity times volume equals moles. If you have equivalent numbers or equivalent moles of acid and base, then you set them equal to each other. Um, now, if you don't have a one-to-one -one solution stoichiometry, then what you can do is you can always do these uh, equations the way we've been doing all other stoichiometry type equations, writing it out longhand. So let's deal with a titration equation where we would standardize our potassium hydroxide solution here. Uh, and we're using KHP, much like 
you do in the lab. Um, remember, KHP is potassium, hydrogen, phthalate, not potassium, hydrogen, and phosphorus. It has a molar mass of 204.2 grams per mole. So let's find out what the concentration of the KOH solution is. So in this case, the KHP is my acid, and the KOH is my base. So the number of moles of KHP at the equivalence point must equal the number of moles of KOH because it is a one-to-one -one stoichiometry. So by determining the number of moles of KHP from the grams of KHP and then dividing by the volume of the solution used to titrate, I can easily calculate the concentration of the KOH. So we're going to take our 0.4218 grams of KHP times one mole is 204.2 grams of KHP, so one mole of KHP there, times, we know it's a one-to-one -one mole ratio, I'm going to go ahead and throw that in there just so that we can keep straight what we're dealing with, so one mole of KOH for every one mole of KHP, then I'm going to divide by my volume in terms of liters, so one over point. 01868 liters and when I calculate this out I'll find that the concentration of the KOH is equal to 0 0.1106 molar KOH all right let's do another titration type problem and in 4.90 it asks us to calculate the concentration of a sodium hydroxide solution of 17.4 milliliters of 0.312 molar hydrochloric acid are needed to titrate 25.0 milliliters of the base solution. So, uh, hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide gives us water and sodium chloride. It's a one-to-one -one stoichiometry. Since it's a one-to-one -one stoichiometry, I can simplify this into MAVA is equal to MBVB. And I want to calculate the molarity of the base, so I'm going to divide both sides by the volume of the base, and that is going to give me molarity of the acid times the volume of the acid over the volume of the base equals the molarity of the base. And now it's just a matter of putting in my uh, numbers. So the molarity of my acid was 0.312 molar. The volume of the acid was 17.4 milliliters and the volume of my base was 25.0 milliliters. When I calculate this out I get 0 0.217 molar sodium hydroxide. In this problem, we're going to use uh, sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide. So the question is, we want to calculate the concentration of a sulfuric acid solution. If 36.54 milliliters of 0.8232 molar sodium hydroxide solution is needed to titrate 20 milliliters of the acid solution. Now, when I have sulfuric acid, H2SO4 and NaOH, that's going to yield Na2SO4 and water. But now I have a 2 to 1 mole ratio. So I can't easily use the titration equation. Can I use the titration equation? Um, yes, and then you apply the mole ratio, but I'm not going to get into that. What I want to do is I want to show you that it works if you just do the longhand version of it anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with my sodium hydroxide. I've got the 0.8232 moles of NaOH for every one liter of that solution times, I'm going to multiply by the volume, 
And now, I'm going to show you a neat little trick here. I don't have to change that into liters, because look at what happens. I've got milliliters there, and then we'll, we'll see that milliliters is going to cancel later on down the line. <clears throat> um, and so here we've got our moles of sodium hydroxide. Now we need to multiply by our mole ratio. There are two moles of sodium hydroxide for every one mole of H2SO4. So one mole H2SO4 for every two moles of NaOH. And then finally I'm going to divide by the volume of my acid solution. So 20.00 milliliters. Now look, the milliliters cancels out, moles cancels out, and I have moles per liter. It's just a neat little shortcut trick that you can do as long as your volumes have the exact same units. So when we calculate this out, we'll see that the concentration of the sodium of the sulfuric acid solution is 0 0.7520 molar sulfuric acid solution. Now I invite you to try using MAVA equals MBVB. If you just run MAVA equals MBVB, what you'll get is this amount. 1.504 molar H2SO4. So you can see that that's actually double what the real concentration is. So if you use MAVA equals MBVB, make sure that your molarity or your, your mole ratio is 1 to 1. If it's not one to one, assess your mole ratio. In this case, it took two moles of sodium hydroxide for every one mole of sulfuric acid. So at the end, I should divide that number by two. And that will give me my actual concentration of sulfuric acid. So as a precautionary measure, if you're worried about it, go ahead and do the longhand version. You can see it's really, I mean it is longer, but it's not that much longer, and you can easily see your units being canceled off. So try whichever way works for you, as long as you can get a consistent, correct answer, then run with whatever you want to do. And our last titration style uh, reaction is also kind of what we would deem a gravimetric analysis. Uh, gravimetric analysis is really um, having to do with measuring masses and volumes. Uh, so you take aqueous solutions and you react them together and you usually get a solid at the end. This is taking the solid to begin with, turning it into an aqueous solution. Slightly different, but the, the key point is, is you're going to deal with mass in this. Um, so a 3.664 gram sample of a monoprotic acid was dissolved in water. It took 20.27 milliliters of a 0 0.1578 molar sodium hydroxide solution to neutralize the acid. We want to calculate not the HT molar mass, but the molar mass. So a little bit of a typo there. The molar mass of the acid. So there, the key bits here are they give us the amount of sodium hydroxide needed for the reaction. They also give us the mass of our acid sample. So I'm going to find the number of moles of base used, the sodium hydroxide. And since it's a monoprotic acid, that means that it's going to be exactly the same number of moles as the acid. So we'll divide the mass of the acid divided by the moles of the acid, and that gives us our molar mass. So we're going to take our 0.15 seven eight moles of sodium hydroxide per liter times zero point zero two zero two seven liters and that gives us moles of sodium hydroxide and it's a one to one mole ratio so one mole of acid for every one mole of sodium hydroxide. That gives us a total number of moles of 0 0.003199 moles of acid. So to get the molar mass, we're going to take the 
four grams divided by the point zero zero three one nine nine moles and we'll get the mass of the acid as one thousand one hundred and fifty grams per mole now that seems like a really high number but the fact of the matter is there are a lot of acid uh, components to things like uh, plastics or even biomolecules so a molar mass of a thousand grams is not really a whole lot in terms of macromolecules as such um, but if you get a number that you think oh that seems a little off go back and check your math uh, during the the running of this problem I actually checked the math four times to make sure that I was doing it correctly and that I wasn't leading you astray so if you get an answer you don't really expect, go back, double check all your math, double check your assumptions, and then take a look at what you get. All right, to finish up, this uh, bit of solution stoichiometry, again, it doesn't matter where you start from, where you go, you're going to. What matters is that mole ratio. So there are a ton of different solution stoichiometry style problems. Uh, and many are represented very well in the back of your textbook um, in, chap in the, the chapter. Uh, so the best way to get good at these is repetitive practice. The more different types of these problems you see, the better you will become at determining what they're asking for and figuring out how to solve these problems. So watch this video, rewind it, watch it again, do all sorts of stuff, do all the problems, and make sure you are seeing as many different types of, types of problems as you can. That is the key to success. So, thanks for watching.